Well, good morning and welcome to Confluence Worship here with Katie First. My name's Mark. I'm one of the pastors and we're delighted that you are with us, whether you're on Facebook, YouTube, or you are on our church website. If you aren't on our church website and you would like to go, uh, it's a great place for prayer requests, uh, online giving, uh, to learn about some of the announcements or interactive notes with the sermon. I have one announcement and we're pretty excited about this. School we know is right around the corner. And of course it's gonna look different uh, in these opening weeks, but we are gonna be hosting a drive-in back to school Unity Pepper. That's a mouthful, but <laughs> you can tell what it is. We're gonna have you come drive up. If you're familiar with Katie First, you know we've got a grass parking lot behind our um, playground and you're gonna come park and we're gonna have fun. It's gonna be like a fun pep rally. Um, we're gonna have some things that we give away we're gonna have some games, we're gonna sing some songs together. And most importantly, we're gonna do a blessing for all our parents, for all of our teachers, and especially for all our kids. So we would love for you to come. It's gonna be on um, August 16th at 6 p.m. And um, if you're part of Katy First, if you're in the Katy area, come join us and it's gonna be a good time. We're looking forward to it. Today, uh, it's gonna be a little different worship service. We're in between sermon series today. And so we're gonna take this day to um, kind of do something a little bit different. We're gonna sing songs like we always do. We're gonna have some prayers, but especially we're gonna come together today and receive communion. If you are at home and you don't have your communion elements, um, all you need is bread and something for juice. If you don't have those, feel free to get a little creative this morning, but go ahead, grab those, and later in the service, we're gonna come together and share in communion. At the end of the day, here's what we want. We hope this morning it's a day that you can receive. Receive a little bit of hope, maybe receive a little grace, uh, come to receive the bread and the wine of communion and come to receive the good news of Jesus Christ that is here for us today. So as we get started, let's open with a word of prayer. Oh, gracious God, wherever it is that we find ourselves this morning, emotionally, spiritually, or even physically, Lord, we know that you will come and you will meet us this morning. And we ask, Lord, that you would soften our hearts and where maybe we feel ourselves a little overwhelmed or a little anxious about what is coming in front of us. God, help us to receive your grace and meet us in this time. It's in Christ's name we pray, amen. Is it 
Amen. Thank you, Ben. Um, I love that song and the way it talks about God being able. It reminds me of one of my favorite pieces of scripture that Paul writes in Ephesians 3. Let me read it real quick. Paul writes, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long, how high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled with the measure of all the fullness of God. And here's the part that gets good. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever, amen. I love that verse because it does speak about that immeasurably more, but here's the deal, here's the deal. How many of you, and you can raise your hand at home or any of us today, how many of you are a little, you're a little tired today? You might be a little anxious, you're a little unsure, you're a little restless because you're ready for whatever it is that we're in to to dissolve, to go away. And that immeasurably more maybe feels like a little too much. Maybe you're running a little low on hope, a little low on faith. And if that's you, here's what I want you to know. First, it's okay. If you're there, it's okay. But secondly, it's often in these spaces where if we're willing to open up a little bit, if we're willing to seek God humbly, that that immeasurably more actually can begin to work something in us. So as we continue this morning, I wanna invite you in with this, with this next song. We're gonna intermix some prayer and scripture in there. I wanna invite you in as a posture to invite God to, to hope and to build that faith that God is immeasurably more at work in us. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, your breath in our lungs and we pour out our praise pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only let's pray oh god where we are tired be the breath in our lungs where we are anxious, be the calm for our soul. And where we are feeling the weight of what has been and what is coming. Give us rest and restoration this morning. You give life, you are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, only it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. Hear these words from Psalm 113. Praise the Lord. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time on and forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and His glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God? Who is seated on high? Who looks far down on the earth and the heavens? He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes and with the princes of his people. He gives the barren woman a home, making her the joyous mother of children. Praise the Lord. So what does faith look like in the pandemic for you? That's a question that I've been asking myself and, and I'm sure you're asking that question too. Like, what is it that, that, that faith looks like in these days? Because quite honestly, some days I wake up and I am charged and I'm excited, I'm hopeful. You know, I look at, I look at all the struggle that we've got going on and I think, you know what? This is the perfect time. This is the perfect time to be the church. It's the perfect time to think creatively and, and it's great and it's grand. And then some days I wake up and I put my feet on the ground and I am not excited and I'm not hopeful and I'm a little drained. Are you there with me? What does faith look like in this pandemic? And, you know, there's a lot of answers to that for sure. Recently, I was um, inspired by a story about a man named Stuart, who um, I've never met Stuart, but I, um, he works at a church that I previously worked at in Atlanta. And he tells the story of uh, when he caught coronavirus. It was actually pretty early on, March and April in that time frame, And um, he caught it pretty early and was beginning to feel some of those symptoms. And soon enough, he found himself in the hospital in an induced coma with a ventilator and moments where his life was seriously in doubt. In fact, the interview that I was watching was not just him, but probably more importantly, his wife, because Stuart really had no idea what was going on once he got in the hospital. And his wife tells about the the difficult journey that they had um, wrestling with his health, wrestling with God, and how do we make sense of all that's going on? And I was so inspired by them. I was so inspired partly because of the, the wife would, would tell of how she was talking with God and praying and, and searching the scriptures and it was up and down and, and Stuart talks about when he came out, what it was like to realize how many people had been praying for him and the journey that he had ahead of him. And they were asked this question of, so how do you make sense of what God was doing? How do you make sense of what your faith is right now? And they, they said these words, they said, well, faith, 
Faith is confidence in God and not in the outcomes of what you want to happen. And certainly in the context of their story that they were sharing on that day, this is so profound. I can only imagine what it was like for Stuart's wife to be praying and for faith to be confidence in God, not necessarily in the outcomes of what you want to happen. And as I heard that, you know, I've been asking myself, how much of my faith is tied to believing God will make happen what I want to happen, whether that's good intended or not? How much of my faith is tied to that as opposed to learning to take pleasure in what God is doing and what God is making happen? It's faith in the confidence of a good God and not what I think God will do so that I think God is good. All right, you can see the difference. It reminds me of a piece of scripture that we read in uh, Hebrews. And you've probably heard it before, Hebrews chapter 11. It's kind of this almost looks like a definition of faith type of thing. And we're going to look at it, um, if you'll stay with me, just a couple of different versions. This, this is the one that out of the NRSV, and this is kind of usually what I preach out of. And, and this is how it says, it says, faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen, which is kind of this nice compact statement, right? But what does that mean? What's the assurance of things hoped for? Because that can kind of sound like I'm really confident that God's going to do what I want God to do. And I've got a deep conviction that even if I don't see it, it's going to come to fruition. But is that faith? Is that what we see here? Some of you, maybe you're reading now the NIV, it looks like this. It says, faith um, is confidence in what we hope for. So very similar and assurance about what we do not see. So pretty, pretty similar. Here's, here's another one. This is coming out of the common English Bible. And notice, notice how the language begins to shift. Um, there's a difficult translation here. Faith is the reality of what we hope for. This is common English Bible. Faith is the reality. That sounds very different than assurance and confidence. Like, it's like we've entered a whole new realm. Where's reality coming from? Faith is the reality of what we hope for and the proof of what we do not see. What, is, what are we getting here? And, and in fact, and we'll read the last one and it comes from Eugene Peterson's The Message. And I think he actually captures it. It's a little bit more lengthy. Typically the message is a little bit more lengthy in its words, like a little long-winded, but, but actually I think it's helping capture what's so true that Stuart and his wife said about faith. This is what it says. It says, the fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith, so already you know, long-winded, this fundamental fact of existence is that this trust in God, this faith, this is what it is is the firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living. Now that's a phrase, isn't it? I mean, confidence of, of what we hope for, that's, that's a good phrase, but how different is a firm foundation under everything that makes life worth living? And really that actually captures what the, the, the Greek is trying to say there. To think of it, you know, Jesus used these metaphors all the time of, of do we know what kind of ground we stand on? Right? That's why I'm confident because I know the maybe the soil I'm in is good. Or he would say, um, do you build your house on, a, on sand or on rock? Is that rock steady? So faith is not about, I'm so confident this thing is gonna happen, but rather I'm confident because I know whose hands I'm in. I know what foundation I'm in. The message continues and it says, and it's our handle on what we can't see. Yeah, because when I know that ground I stand on, when I'm confident in whose hands I'm in, I know, you know whatever I can't see, I know is still gonna be good. The act of faith is what distinguished our ancestors and set them above the crowd. <laughs> the rest of Hebrews goes on and talks about other faithful people and how this faith worked out for them. And I think this is such a powerful reminder, especially in this season, what is faith? Is it that I have to be so confident in a certain thing happening or is it that I begin to become confident, recenter myself on being confident and hopeful in God in whose hands that I'm in? And really this is a vulnerable, but it's a freeing thing. Think about it this way. This is how I think about it. Think about if you have a friend 
that um, it really doesn't matter what you're doing. It could be that you're going to the movies. It could be that you're going to the park. It could be that you're, I've got plans for the day or it could be none of that. It's like, I'm free, you're free. Let's just get together and see what madness happens, right? You maybe have a friend who just because you know them and you trust them, like what you doesn't, what you do doesn't matter as much as that you're just with them because you know you're going to have fun no matter what. For me, thankfully, um, this is my wife, Hannah. It's why I married her <laughs> because I know whether we are, um, driving around town and we're just looking at houses and we're having fun. We don't really know what to do with the Saturday. What I know is I, I trust my wife and she's fun and she's fun to be around. And it's just, we're going to make something fun out of it that day. Even our vacations, like we plan some stuff. We got some things planned, but, but for the most part, we just, we just want to be together, right? This is that idea. This is that kind of microcosm of you trust the person. You trust God, not necessarily in the outcomes that would have to be, but you just know when you're with that person, it's going to be good. You might even co-create something good together. As we look at this season that we continue to be in, as we said earlier in the service, I know we're all in a lot of different places in, and there's a lot of different ways that we might be feeling about what it is that we're in. And this is really quite simply today, this was the only idea that I wanted us to gather around, to trust that God is good and that God is doing good in our world. Does it mean that we have to know what to do, but it can mean I trust God that as we go, you are with me. I don't know what's going to happen, but I know that God is good. I don't know what's gonna come of this, but I know that God is good. I don't know how we're gonna make sense of school in a month from now or two months from now, but you know what? I know that God is good and God's going to be with us. That's faith. Not that we have to have everything figured out, but that we know the ground we stand in, whose hands that we are with, whose relationship we are with, and no matter what, that's gonna be good. As we come to today, we're gonna to come to communion. And here's what we're gonna do. As we come to communion, this is one of those opportunities where we come to receive the gift of God. You know, for, from the very beginning, when the church got together, they would celebrate this meal. And it was a way to remember Jesus, a way to remember that Christ is still with them and present with them. Communion is one of those things where we come not only to receive, but we participate with God. I, I love, you know, I miss, I love when, when we would come forward and we would receive communion and, and there's just, there's so many different versions of people who come up and we're all different and yet we're united and yet we're one. And as we take communion this morning, we're separated by screen and we're separated in our homes and but we're one as we do that together. You know, when we celebrate communion on any Sunday, we also remember it's not just the people that are in that room with us, but the thousands and thousands of churches all over the globe who would be celebrating communion with us. And not just the people here and now, but the ones who have been doing it in the ages before us. When we come for communion, we're coming to receive. We're coming to enter into the mystery of God to receive that grace. And if you find yourself at the end of the day, not able to muster enough faith, not able to muster enough energy, communion is one of those ways where it's not about what you can muster, it's about what you can receive. It's about how your hands are gonna be. And today, as we come for communion, that is my hope. You're welcomed here. And we're all equal at this table that we would ground ourselves in the hope that God is with us.
far from temptation Deliver me from the evil one Look out the window The birds are composing Not a note is out of tune Or out of place Walk to the meadow, stare at the flowers Better dressed than any girl on her wedding day So why should I worry? Why do I freak out? God knows what I need The kingdom of the heavens is now advancing Invade my heart, invade this broken town The kingdom of the heavens Buried treasure Would you sell yourself to buy the one you found? The two things you told me You are strong and you love me Yes, you love me Give us today our daily bread Deliver us weary sinners Keep us far from our vices And deliver us from these prisons Your love is, your love is, your love is Your love is, your love is 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 strong So at this time, I hope that you would pull together the elements that you have at home. And you know, as we come to this communion table together, as, we, as I said just a bit ago, this is something that the church has done for, for ages. Often it was done in homes, just as you are having to do today. And these are simple elements that we have. They're bread and they're wine or whatever you're having to use to get creative this morning. But as we come to receive, we come to receive it knowing that we are united with those women and men all over the globe and who have gone before us who shared in this faith together. We receive communion and we acknowledge, you know what, we have a common humanity that binds us together. And as we come to receive communion, we come to receive the grace of God that sustain us, sustains us. So as we begin, 
I'm going to invite you to receive this invitation. Are you hungry? Are you tired? Are you longing for a more peaceful and hopeful world? Then I extend this invitation to you today. Come to the table of the Lord, where all who seek to live in peace with God and one another are welcomed. Let us pray. Oh God, in days like these, it is easy for us to lose track of you, easy to become more isolated, easy to lose hope. So free us from that which entangles us from peace and awaken in us that which is loving and true. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took the bread, he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks and he gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. For this is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many. Drink this and remember me. Let us pray. Oh God, in remembrance of your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. So pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and wine and pour it out upon us. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world. It's in the name of Christ Jesus, we pray, amen. Friends, just as we are many this morning and we are in many places, as we partake of this bread together, we are one in the body of Christ. In the cup over which we give thanks, it is a sharing in the blood of Christ. At this time in your home, I would invite you to gather together your elements. If you are with others, um, I would invite you to serve and to serve them by um, tearing off a piece of bread and placing it in their hand that we would receive from each other. And then to dip that into the cup. If um, you are by yourself and you are celebrating this, here's what I want you to know, you're not alone. We are with you this morning. And if you're not able to receive communion this morning or you're just choosing not to receive it, I'm gonna ask you to receive this blessing. May the grace and the peace of God fill you, sustain you, and continue to lead you forward. Amen. At this time, take a moment, serve communion to one another, and we'll be back as you do that. Friends, thank you for joining us this morning. Um, Thank you for celebrating communion with us today. As we go forward, we're gonna be starting a new sermon series next week, talking about the things that make for peace. I'm excited about it. I know that you will enjoy it and it's gonna be great for uh, just where we are in life. We hope that you will join us, mark your dates, uh, August 16th, as we get back to, to school 
and we can do that blessing together. But as you go this week, may you have faith in God, trust in God, and may the grace of God sustain you. Have a great week. Amen.